show. Welcome to the Midweek Bible Study. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This week we will continue our study, uh, 1 Thessalonians. Uh, we are in chapter 2, verses 9 through 14. But before we jump in, would you join me in prayer? Lord, I want to thank you for this time and uh, the privilege it is to, to do what I do. Lord, you are good and you are kind. And Father, I pray that you would bless this time for your glory. Lord, that... Uh, all those believers who listen would uh, walk closer to you, be near to you, or that your spirit would challenge them and grow them, that you would open their minds and their hearts, that you would give them eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, please protect the words that I say, that they would uh, be for the edification of your people. Lord, I praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, so last week, uh, I began by um, arguing that we're all in ministry. Um, this chapter 2 of 1 Thessalonians speaks about Paul's account as he conducts himself in ministry. Um, and I, I kind of want to go back to Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20 again and, and, and pick up there briefly just as a review. Um, because I, I, I do believe that we are all called uh, to be in ministry. Um, that that passage clearly tells us that that uh, the original disciples were called to go and make other disciples, and that next generation was to go and make another generation of disciples, and, and so on and so on and so on, all the way and it gets down to where we are hundreds of years later. Um, you and I are not called just to be listeners about Jesus or people who uh, think Jesus is pretty cool and pretty neat. Uh, we are called to be his disciples, uh, we're, uh, or in other words, we're called to be his followers, uh, people who, who follow after Christ, who want to be like Christ, who want to think like Christ and love like Jesus, um, not just people who read about him and know some stuff about uh, the, the Son of God, you know, but no, we want to be near to God and, and follow in his Son's footsteps, um, and so because of that, you and I are called to ministry. You and I um, are called to be discipled, to grow in, in knowledge and in an imitation of Christ, and then eventually to go and, and, and tell other people about Jesus. And the Lord will use our words to, to work on the hearts of other people and, and convince them that, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that they can be near to their Creator and, that, and to, 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 to convince them to turn from their ways and, and to follow Christ. And so... Um, we are all in ministry. Uh, maybe right now you're at that point where you're uh, you're being taught and you're soaking it up and, and you're changing and, and the Lord's working on you. But I want you to know the direction that your life's going, that eventually there'll be a time where you will be called to speak on Christ's behalf, to go and tell people about Jesus. And the Lord will use your words to change hearts and minds in people. And so just know that, that that's, that's our life. That's our calling. Uh, we're not called just to be you know, takers. We're not called just to be students forever of the Bible, but we're called to eventually uh, to be teachers. Now, obviously, all of our ministries will look different, and Jesus talks about that in his parables and his teachings, and that's okay. The Lord just wants us to do what we're called to do. He just wants us to do our part. And so, by starting on that foundation that we're all uh, in ministry, then it's very important that we look at First Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, because it tells us how should we live. We look at Paul, who had a very successful ministry that was blessed by the Lord. Man, and, and if God blessed him and used him, you know, I, I want to be like Paul, man, and I hope you do too. And so let's spend some time looking at how Paul uh, conducted himself. But also, this passage talks about how did the Thessalonians Christians respond to Paul's teaching. And so that's a huge challenge to us, too. How do we respond uh, to that teaching? So let's, uh, let's read, shall we? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 14. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil. We worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You. Our witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct towards you, believers. For you know how, like a father and his children, we exhorted each one of you, encouraged you, and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. 
And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as it really is, the very word of God, which is at work in you believers. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that is in Judea. All right, let's jump in. So, first thing, uh, how did Paul conduct himself in, in ministry? Uh, man, basically, you know, he wasn't a hypocrite, right? Uh, Paul talks about how and he wasn't a burden on them. Uh, you know, he uh, he walked in a way that was holy and righteous and blameless in his conduct towards other believers. You know, how Paul lived his life and how he taught people, it totally lined up. Paul wasn't a hypocrite. If he was teaching people uh, to love like this or to do this and, and to, to follow Christ and, and to act this way, Paul was living out that example. You know, he he wasn't somebody uh, who, who taught one way and lived another. No, Paul was a man of integrity and he wasn't a hypocrite. And so we as, uh, um, as believers and as uh, brothers and sisters in ministry of Christ, you know, when we get to that point where we are teaching other people and we are guiding other people, uh, we got to make sure that, that we're not hypocrites, you know, that we are doing the very thing that we are teaching other people to do. And because that's such a high standard, I don't want anybody to rush into a teaching role. I don't want anybody to go, man, all right, boom, I want to teach people. I want to, you know, God, I want to speak on, on the Lord's behalf. Man, whoa, 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 that is a huge responsibility. It's nothing that we should just jump into. And, and the Bible talks about that, that, you know, young Christians shouldn't be leaders and teachers um, because there's just that, that, that ability to fall away that they get full of themselves or maybe they're not all completely squared away and they've got some growing to do you know um i've seen it in, in ministry and other places that the people get saved they want to jump right into a leadership role and it doesn't it often doesn't turn out very well at all uh you know maybe somebody falls away or um you know mistakes are made and, and people's faith are is, is damaged you know because they trusted this person um and now they see that person's a hypocrite and it really, uh, it really sets people off. It really pushes them away uh, from wanting to be like God um, and to, to follow Christ, you know, and, and to live this life. Um, and so, you know, we've got to make sure that we are, you know, correct, that we're right, that we, um, you know, the Lord has blessed us with enough self-control before we jump into that, uh, that we know that it's, it's really our timing and our place uh, before we do that. You know, that was a huge uh, complaint and, and critique that Jesus had um, of the religious leaders of his day. You know, the, they were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Um, man, and Jesus often came down on them because they would teach people one way and they themselves would live a different way. Um, you know, out out in public, they're, they're saying this thing and maybe even in public, you know, they're, they're leading that life. But Christ, the Son of God, knew that in their hearts and in their private lives, they were nothing uh, but hypocrites, just empty. Um, he called them whitewashed tombs. You know, on the outside it looks great, but on the inside they're rotten and dead. Um, that, and so man, that, that is a huge thing. Um, and it's something for, for you and I to look into. You know, as we look uh, to be taught and to be discipled, uh, and we look at other Bible leaders and, and, and teachers, and we got to look at their character and go, are they, are they walking the walk? Or are they just talking things, you know? Um, but they say in one thing and live in a different way. Uh, it's really important that we that we check those things before we get maybe led astray um, or our own faith becomes damaged because we were following somebody and we were um, really into, uh, you know, how they spoke and their charisma and all those things. Lo and behold, you know, um, that uh, they're not on the right path. And that's not to say that um, a Christian's not going to make mistakes. I mean, I make mistakes. Tim makes mistakes, man. We all fall. We all have rough days, um, you know. Um, you know, the scriptures tell us not to get angry, and I've taught people not to get angry. And I tell you what, the other night uh, when I stubbed my toe on a box, man, I was pretty hot. You know, here's this box in the middle of the night. I'm walking to the bathroom. I stubbed this toe on this big old heavy box. Whew, I was mad, you know. Uh, and I probably got more upset about that stupid box than I should have. Uh, and that's something I need to repent of, you know, and that's something I needed to, to ask God to forgive me of and give me more self-control. And I make mistakes, man, I fall. Um, and uh, but the lifestyle 
You know what I mean? Uh, is, is We're all going to stumble. We're all going to trip up. But is that a lifestyle? Is that person, you know, consistently teach on, you know, not getting mad, but they themselves live a life of, of, of anger and, and vitriol and, and hatred towards people? Um, and that, that's, 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 a, that's a lot of hypocrisy. You know, or does a person tell other people to, to love and to care and to provide for people and to help people, but you never see them around to, to do good and, and to be there for people? Um, you know, it's the lifestyle. Is that lifestyle of hypocrisy um, or, you know, or is it just a, a slip up of a mistake? You know, and that's for you and I to judge about somebody. Um, but we've got to hold ourselves at high standards and make sure that, that we're not living hypocrites, but we are following the ways that we are teaching other people to do. And Paul wasn't. He wasn't a hypocrite, man. He lived a life that was holy, righteous, and blameless before other people, uh, the believers in Thessalonian. Um, the second thing that we can learn from Paul is that, uh, man, how he taught people. Um, it says here, um, for you know, like a father and his children, we exhorted each one of you, encouraged you, and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Um, if somebody is going to be a leader among Christians and to be a teacher, they have got to exhort, encourage, and charge people. Uh, now, all those words have a pretty close meaning. They really um, are all closely related to teaching people uh, about God's word and, you know, not teaching people their own way or, or what they think is right, but teaching people uh, the Bible in, in a way that gets others to closer in a walk with God. But there is some subtle differences, you know, to exhort somebody that passionate teaching. I mean, this person really believes and they're passionate and I mean, they love God with everything. They, they understand the teaching. They're not doing it half-hearted or kind of oh um But man, they're giving it their all. Um, they're passionate teachers about God's word, um, you know, and they, they're giving it all their strength, all their energy, their time, their, their mental strength as they study. They're spending time with it. They're, they're doing all these things. It is, I mean, it is passionate teaching. Uh, they encourage people, you know, as you and I go through life and there are hard times and there are um, difficult things that we go through and you and I all need to be encouraged. We all need to understand, uh, you know, other people's hurts and the pains that they're going through and, and be able to help them up and lift them up and give them an arm and say, hey, you're not alone. Let's go through this together. Um, Paul did that. Uh, and, and the Bible teachers that you look up to and, and the, the Christian leader that you are going to grow up into and be, and you have got to be willing to encourage people, to help people, and be there for them. Um, and Paul did that as he lived his life. He encouraged people. He wasn't just always beating them down, uh, but he encouraged them in Christ. He told them about the love of Jesus and, and the forgiveness and the power of Christ that nobody, nothing can take them out of God's hand. Man, that is powerful stuff to know that the Lord never gives up to me, that it, uh, my salvation is never on the line. But the Lord is always there to love me and forgive me and keep on going. And that is encouraging stuff. And we need to know those type of things. Um, and this is also Paul charged them. Now the word charge definitely has a legal bent to it. Uh, and it definitely has a kind of a correction connotation to that word. Uh, you know, to, to, to be somebody in ministry as somebody who's going and making other disciples and, and leading and guiding people. There is an aspect where you and I will have to correct people. You know, like, hey, the things that you're doing doesn't line up in the best way with what God's Word says. You and I are going to have to correct people. Uh, we can't just tell people what they want to hear all the time. And I, I hate conflict. I would love to be helpful and encouraging all the time. But man, I can't do that. Because eventually it gets to a point where I'm going to have to either tell somebody what they want to hear or I'm going to have to correct them and go, actually, and if you want to follow Jesus... This is the way you need to go. You, you, you can't go that way anymore. It's time to turn. It's time to take a different path. You know, that lifestyle of those actions or that attitude doesn't walk you closer to the Lord. Uh, that doesn't honor him. That doesn't glorify him and lift him up. Um, in fact, that actually rebels against him. It tells us not to do that. Uh, so uh, a, good, um, a good disciple maker. 
is willing to charge people, to encourage them, to correct them, to walk in a manner that's worthy of the Lord, uh, to, to correct the way that they're going and go, hey, that's, that's not quite it. You need, to, you need to come over this way. You need to, you know, get rid of this or, or change that and go this way. Um, so you and I, make sure that we are willing to correct our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ if we are in that role. Um, and know that that's what you're looking for in somebody. You're not looking for just a, a yes man or a yes woman who's willing to, to tell you everything and make you feel great all the time. No, they're, they're willing to, to correct you and, and to point out the fact that like, maybe you and I's life compared to the scripture isn't really right on. And so we need to correct ourselves. Um, now that passage ends with saying, uh, you know, we, to, uh, to walk in a way, manner worthy of the Lord um, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And why should we be corrected? Why should we, you know, deny ourselves? Why should we not do what we want to do? Why should we follow the scriptures? Uh, because we want to be in God's kingdom. Because we want to be near God and to follow him and enjoy his love and his kindness and his forgiveness. That's why. So that passage reminds us, you know, why should uh, I be charged? Why should I change? Remember, because you and I as Christians, as followers of Christ, we want to be in his kingdom. We want to be near to him and do things like he does. Um, and so Paul, he taught people um, how to be Christians. Um, he lived it out. He taught them. And this is uh, kind of the, the main point of this is how do the Thessalonians respond? Because the truth is that you and I, we're all students of the gospel. We're all students of the Bible. Um, not all of us right now are teachers. Uh, even me as a pastor, as somebody who uh, teaches God's word, man, I am a student. There are pastors who have been doing this way longer than I have. I've got so much to learn from. There are professors who know the Bible so much better than I do. And I want to learn from them. And I want to understand the things that they understand and incorporate that into my life. I am a student just as much as anybody else who listens to this video is. And so you and I as students of the scriptures, as students um, of, uh, of Christ, as we follow him in his ways, we have... We can look at how did the Thessalonians respond? And that can remind us, man, you know what? I'm a student too, and that's how I need to respond. Uh, verse 13, for we constantly thank God for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it. Not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the very word of God, which is at work in you, believers. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. When you and I, as students of the Lord, hear his word spoken, or we're in our Bible study, you know, searching out the scriptures and reading, or whether we're at church in a service, or, or listen to a video or a podcast or whatever, when we are students and we are here to learn um, from the scriptures that God had written down, we need to make sure that we accept those words just as the Thessalonians did and then we become imitators. You know, it's really easy when the Lord, uh, you know, convicts us, you know, we're, we're reading a passage or someone's speaking and the Lord convicts us in our heart. Like, oh man, I don't like that. Oh no, I don't want to accept that. I don't want, no, that can't be true. Or I mean, it's, it's so easy that when, when God says, hey, you got to correct this, you know, like, you're going this direction, but really you need to be on this path and, and doing these things like this. And it's easy not to accept that. It's easy to, to fight against it. But no, we need to accept God's word when it's spoken and when it's read to us. We need to go to those scriptures. And even though it may hurt, even though it may be uncomfortable or it's not what we want, man, we have got a choice to make. Are we going to follow our own ways or are we going to follow God's ways? And if God's way says, you know, do this, then we need to accept it. If it says, don't do this, we need to accept it. Um, if it says, think like this, love this, hate this, and we need to follow that. Um, 
It's not just a, a mental exception, but it says they became imitators. And so when you and I, when we um, are students and we're learning, we have got to do what it says. You know, and the scriptures say, get rid of, you know, uh, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Man, all right, I need to put to death those things in my life. I need to find the sexual immorality that's in my life. I need to put it to death. The greed, those things that I lust after, man, I need to put that stuff to death. You know, when, when, when Christ says, um, you know, uh, therefore, since you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Also, set your mind on things above. And I need to do that. I need to set my heart and my desires and my wants on Jesus. I need to set my mind on Jesus and thinking about Jesus. And it's so easy to get caught up in wanting other things and thinking about other things so much. But the reality is, man, all right, whew, Jesus, you say this is what I should focus on. This is what I should think about the most. This is what I should love and desire the most. You, all right. I got to do that. I got to imitate what it says. You know, Jesus says, love your enemies. All right. You know, Jesus says, forgive people. All right. And all right, I got I to gotta imitate that. And I got to copy that and mimic that and, and be a person who forgives and loves other people. And so you and I as students, uh, we need to be like the Thessalonians. And they accepted the words when they were spoken to them. They let the word of God work in them um, as they listened to it and, and they didn't fight it. And they became imitators of it. They copied it in their own life. They did what the scripture says. And so uh, and this is a, a super fascinating passage, just looking at the ministry of Paul and how did, how did he do things. Man, well, man, he wasn't a hypocrite. Paul taught people, and when he taught people, and he's willing to encourage them, he did it with passion, and he's willing to correct them. And, and then in that ministry, man, Paul was the teacher, uh, and, and the Thessalonians were the students. And in that relationship, the Thessalonians, they accepted those words. They let those words work in them because the word of God is alive, and the spirit works and convicts and changes us from the inside out. And also, uh, Man, they became imitators. And so we too, as students of the scriptures, need to be imitators and acceptors of God's word. Not fight against it, not want to do our own thing, but to follow it in all the ways that it says. Um, man, you and I are called to ministry. And Paul had a fantastic ministry that was blessed by him. And in this passage, when we get to look at how did he live, how did he conduct himself, what did he do? So we can mimic that in our own ministry that we'll someday get to. Let's close out in prayer, shall we? Father, thank you for equipping us for ministry. Lord, you have so much bigger things planned for us than just to be students of the scripture. But you want to use us to spread your hope and your love and your kindness to other people, to, to teach them how to walk in a way that honors you, that they can be close to you and a part of your kingdom. Lord, thank you for using us. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to grow us and mature us as we walk in a way that's uh, closer to you every day. Father, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you also for tuning in. God bless.